looking at methane, the geometry of the electron orbitals don't make sense when one considers S and P orbitals because they're not shaped that way. And that is because when there is a bond like this where I get tetrahedral geometry, what happens is that hybrid orbitals are created. Looking at carbon has a 2s orbital and a 2p orbital and has two electrons in there. Hydrogen has one electron in the s orbitals. So what could happen is that the hydrogen, this electron could go into this orbital over here. Obviously a hydrogen can't occupy this whole orbital empty. It can't have two hydrogens put an electron in there. So what would need to happen is for this model to work where there are no hybrid orbitals, this electron would need to go over in here and then these hydrogens would need to share one in each. But then not only would the shapes not add up, but also the 2s bonds and the 2p, bond, 2p bonds would be different energies. And when one observes experimental values for the bond energies, they are of equal strength. So what happens when this tetrahedral geometry takes place? What happens is that these orbitals quote-unquote hybridize. In the case of a tetrahedral into four orbitals of equal energy. And these are called sp3 orbitals and they would all go in here. And here is a cross section of what an sp3 orbital would look like. It'd be kind of like a three-dimensional three mushroom shape. But four of these, they would have the tetrahedral geometry they would have equal strength. And that's how orbitals hybridize. And the other shapes as well for the something with, let's say, three or linear. I'll just put X. It doesn't have to be a carbon. It can be a carbon. These would only be different in the amount of orbitals that would need to be hybridized. Since only three bonds are taking place here, I'm going to have an s orbital, and I'm going to use two of the p orbitals. So this would be sp2. This one I'm only going to have an s and a p orbital, so this would just be sp. So those are pretty simple, and there are other hybrid orbitals with d, but I'm not really going to bother with those. The principles are the same. If one can do these ones, I can do any of the other ones. But I guess there's just one more thing to mention with hybrid orbitals, and that's when there's a double bond. Something like ethene. This has sp2 hybridization, it's got triangular geometry. But there's also this pi bond. And what that is, is that on top here, actually I'll do this in a different color, is a p orbital. So this is all sp2. And this is a p orbital. So what the electrons would look like. Here are the three sp2 orbitals and then there would be a leftover p orbital. That's not hybridized. And that's where the double oh. and that's where the double bond would be. And 
I can have the same thing if it was one less. So if I had just SP, then I can still have 2P orbitals. It's like acetylene or something like that. So look at this carbon. In this case, there would be a triple bond, and then there would be a p orbital up here, p orbital down here. That's what uh, I probably shouldn't have drawn that line if I was going to do these ones. Well, that's all there really is to hybrid orbitals. Hybrid orbitals. Hybrid organization. <laughs> Yeah, hybrid organization, that's all there really is to it.